Well, hello there, motherfuckers, and welcome to your Raw Review. So, you know, like, okay, we're, we're, um, we're in, in the UK, you know, I guess we're not really going to care that much, you know, it's a tape show and everything, okay, so there was a little bit of eventfulness at the end of the show, but a really boring show. So we start off with the Miz and Kurt Angle. Miz replays, you know, the 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 clip where Stephanie verbally chopped off Kurt Angle's balls. You know, I want to tell you a nomination. I, I mean, oh God, cringe city, all aboard the cringe copter. Oh my fucking God, she just really needs to stop. I mean, like, I hope we don't see her anymore from this. I mean, like, this, Stephanie's character has become, like, a fucking Godzilla. You, you know, like, an unstoppable, like, I don't get it. I still, it kills me. I know Kurt's making a paycheck and everything, but how can he just, like, I know this is scripted and these are, they're just acting, but still, it's like, you're making the guy look pathetic on a national TV show. I mean, like, being broadcast worldwide. I'll still never get it. So Angle tells Miz he's going to be facing Strowman tonight. Miz gets down his hands and knees and starts begging Angle. Uh, in the first match, we had Jason Jordan defeating um, Elias Sampson, a guitar on the pole match. Uh, was it me, or did they, like, add a little stupid sound effect at the end of the match, or, you know, it, it, it sounded like a bong, like, it actually sounded like Quick Draw McGraw, like the El Cabong cartoons, you know, hey, Baba Louie, don't you forget him, you know, it, like, well, it was like, bong, like, there's no way that it was supposed to sound that way in actuality. Um, so George, Jordan wins a match. I like this concept. You know, we haven't seen an on-the-pole match in a while or one that I can remember at least. So it was refreshing to see a gimmick match, something different besides a serious wrestling match on Raw. Reminded me of when Raw used to be fun and entertaining. Um, Asuka, 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 you know, as a lot of people like to say, Asuka. I guess, you know, like well, some people say it Asuka because she uses her ass in the match with the hip attack. I never understood the name of that move, the hip attack. You're clearly hitting your opponent with your ass. This is not your hip. Do you ever see like a girl walking in a thong or in a tight pair of leggings and you're like, wow, she's got great hips. No, you say she's got a great ass. Well, you might comment on the hips, but mostly... Hips are just, you know, part, you know, on the side of the ass. But it's not a hip attack. It's an ass attack. But I guess maybe an ass attack would sound too much like diarrhea. Or, you know, it just wouldn't go well with, you know, with the move, I suppose. Once again, I, you know, I can't even believe I'm remembering this. But her opponent last week was Stacy Colon. This week it's Stacy Coates. Is, is maybe next week? Are we going to get Stacy Keebler returning? Is that maybe like a hint? Is that some type of foreshadowing? I, I, I don't know. But anyway, she kicked the fucking shit out of this jobber. The, the stiff style. I mean, my God. The, the girl comes on here, you know, developmental, whatever, and she just gets fucking tortured by Asuka. Uh, you know, it, it's like... We already saw that when she goes against a regular opponent that is competent in the ring as well, who's, you know, not just there to be a fucking punching bag. Asuka don't look that good. But when Asuka's in these matches, she, she doesn't look good. She doesn't know how to sell. She's only good when she's on the offense and she's allowed to do all her fucking kicks. But they have been exposed. Naka Murphy and his little girl girlfriend here on Raw, his Raw female counterpart, it's kind of almost like looking at a transgendered Naka Murphy of some sort. You know, I, I don't know. And I, I, there's a lot of weird fans who are attracted to Asuka. I don't know if they want her to kick, you know, their ass. You know, maybe that's what they would like. You know, they, I think maybe 
they think that maybe that would be sexy, you know, Oscar coming there and fucking kicking you in the head. You know, I, 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 I don't know. You guys are weird here in the YWC. Samoa Joe uh, beat up Titus and Apollo Crews when they were coming out to the ring. Um, you know, I guess this was a follow-up on 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 uh, last week. I don't know. They were coming out. They were so maybe supposed to have a match with Joe. I I, I don't even know. Uh, anyway, he, he says he wants um, a different opponent. Um, and out comes Fuckboy Balor. Well, well, here we go. You know, here we go. Here's the, the Internet's dream match, right? It's a dream match. You lay awake at night thinking of this. Wade Keller, Meltzer Magoo, you know, what culture. They're all getting hard-ons for this match, and it ends in a countdown. And when they were fighting on the entrance ramp, it was like, <laughs> it looked like two bitchy pussy boy faggots fighting. Let, let, let's be honest. You don't remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, leading up to Alicia Fox being named the team captain of the Raw women's team? Remember, like, when she beat Sasha up backstage and she was, like, you know, smashing her head into, like, you know, the steel crates or whatever? Well, how come this looked so fucking phony compared to that backstage segment with fucking women. With with women in it. It didn't look as good when the guys did it. Samoa Joe, oh, this guy's tough and stiff, and he's so great and all this. I, I, I mean, what? what? Th there was nothing great about this at all. This was, it looked like two fucking pussy boys fighting. No joke. Kurt Angle comes out and he's impressed by this for some reason. Wow, this you guys look tough. So he puts them on the Raw team. I'm like, you're rewarding this fake-looking fighting bullshit by putting these guys on the team? The, the fact that you're telling me that this is the best Raw has to offer is pretty fucking sad. And I'm not really too thrilled about this team. So we've got Kurt Angle... Braun Strowman, Finn Balor, Samoa Joe. I mean, and then they add another one. So backstage, they named the um, the the fifth member of the team, and it's Jason Jordan. He's the last member of the team. Um, you, you know, I I guess like this is this is how you do it if you want to push this guy. Put a give him a slot on the team. You know, it's okay. It's like. It's really weird how they work this. Either they don't want to go overboard with showing Angle and Jordan on the screen every week. But ever since like he named him his son, you would think that this guy would be like in the upper mid-card. But he feels more like in the lower mid-card. Yeah, he had his match to open Raw and everything. But that's exactly my point. I mean, they're not showing this guy in the main events. They're not. The guy's not really going anywhere. Like, if anything, you know, a guy like Elias has more going for him with his gimmick and his demeanor. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm not really too sure what they want to do with this guy. They should have went, you know, with that storyline where Kurt Angle talked about Jason Jordan's aggression in the ring, that he was too aggressive and that, you know, maybe Jordan would turn heel. It was an idea, but... You know, this is where it's currently going. I don't really see how Jason Jordan will truly be over. Anytime soon, at least. Sasha Banks and Bailey defeated Alicia Fox and Nia Jax. Fox uh, wanted Sasha to be on the team. She names her, to, you know, as a member on the team. Uh, Braun Strowman in The Miz. You know, Strowman just dominated The Miz. And then Kane came out. So it was like a no contest. And this was pretty cool to see Kane and Strowman face to face fighting it out. Um, you know, Strowman, um, you know, gave the power slam to Kane. Kane sat up, he clotheslined him over the top rope. They were going for classic Kane here. The only thing about this is we all know where this is going. Eventually, Strowman and, and Kane will either. What's the last pay per view of the year at Clash of Champions, I guess? They're gonna is that what it is? I don't know. I, I saw a little something online, but anyway, but 
But Strowman and Kane will wrestle. Obviously, Strowman will go over, and then Kane will disappear for another year. I mean, that, that's basically how it's going to go. Um, then in the ring, I, you know, guys, get ready here because I'm, a I'm about to rant here. I'm about to get very fucking upset! So, I understand that a lot of people that watch these videos or in the YWC and the IWC don't like Enzo. I, I know you guys like to watch little faggy men like Finn Boy, Finn, you know, uh, I was going to say Finn Boy Ballard. That actually doesn't sound too bad. You know, Fuck Boy Ballard. Da -da 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 you know, I, 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 I get that and everything. But, you know, Enzo, when he's in the ring, I mean, the guy has a natural charisma about him. The guy commands attention. And, you know, I see a lot of people complaining on YouTube about him. They're saying, oh, you know, this guy only got to where he is because of his mouth. And, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, this guy only got to where he is because of his mouth. So... What you're saying is The Rock didn't get to where he is because of his mouth. Stone Cold didn't get to go get to go where he is because of his mouth. Macho Man didn't get to where he was going to go because of his mouth. Hulk Hogan didn't get, you know, he didn't get there because of his mouth. Do you think people were really sitting there, you know, and, and, and really like studying The Rock's skills and the crispness of the moves? No. They were focused on the guy being entertaining because he got himself over because of his mouth, because the way how he spoke, the way how he carried himself. So, we have Enzo here cutting a promo in the ring, talking about Kalisto, doing what just about everybody has done on the show. Cut a backstage promo, cut a backstage promo. Okay. Then all of a sudden, we're, we're hearing all three announcers call for cutting the mic of Enzo. Like, they can't stand this guy, get him off the mic and everything. And it was just, you know, uh, Enzo's doing a good job. I mean, this there's one thing about this guy. He handles himself like Alexa Bliss does. Even better than Alexa Bliss when it, when it comes to the fans out there. A Enzo, you know, they were saying, we want Neville. And I like Neville, too. I've talked about that on a number of occasions. But he says, yeah, I ran that guy out of town. Shuts that chant down. But I didn't like the aggressive nature that, that they were telling the announcers to like tell them to cut this guy's mic and everything and acting like, oh, this is so boring, I can't stand it. When this is the most charismatic... Meanwhile, you have fucking fat boys with big titties that, like I said, all I want to do is give the guy a fucking purple nurple and that little fuck boy, Balor, trading these little fucking ineffective punches <laughs> and getting reward. Oh, what beautiful fake fighting. You're on the team, you know. And meanwhile, Enzo is cutting a promo here like a pro and getting heat on himself, you know, and trying and combating the crowd. And then the announcers are coming at him like fucking hyenas. It's like, and Enzo's supposed to be a heel, and I feel sympathetic towards the man because the thing is, I want the announcer's mics to be cut! Shut those fuckers up! I'm trying to listen to their promo! Shut up! Oh my god! It, it, these idiots... And I have to listen to that fucking idiot, Corey Graves, and we... Get Corey Graves! the hell off commentary. I am sick and tired of, li of listening to this fucking dumbass. Every single week, he's being monster handled. Oh, you think that that, that beatdown comes in pumpkin spice? You suck! 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 Shut up! Get out of there! Cut his mic, cut Enzo's mic, cut your mic, you stupid idiot. Stupid fucking moron, piece of shit announcer. How did we go from JR and the King? How did we go from on SmackDown, Moro Ranallo, a great announcer? How did we go from that 
to this. Oh my God. So Kalisto comes out and introduces Pete Dune. Who the fuck is Pete Dune? Well, I don't know who Pete Dune is, but he beat Enzo. Beat the Cruiserweight champ coming coming out of nowhere. We're in the UK, so let's, you know, it's Pete Dune. He's from the UK, too. Why? Who is Pete Dune? And this is what I'm saying. I don't watch NXT. So I don't, I've heard of Pete Dune. Uh, you know, I don't want to see this guy. And, and then we're seeing Kurt Angle introduce him and, and everything. And once again, this guy's the future. How come every guy... Look, First of all, let's look at Pete Dune. He looks like shit, okay? This guy doesn't really have any look to him at all. The face is plain. The body is unimpressive. The attire is bland and boring. The entrance music is as generic as fuck. I mean, what about Pete Dune is great? And does anybody give a shit about the UK belt? What kind of fucking belt is that? I'll tell you one thing. It definitely ain't as prestigious as the YWC championship. That shit is not even prestigious as that fucking belt they have on the what culture promotion. I am defiant. I am defiant. I, you know... That's a, that's a rant for a different day. How about that? You know, every single time I watch a what culture video, it's always fall. I am defiant. I I say get rid of those fucking commercials and get rid of Corey Graves. I don't know which what, what I want to get rid of more, the I am defiant shit or Corey Graves. Either one, they're interchangeable. Get rid of both. That'd be a fucking a great Christmas present for fuck's sakes. But, you know, he comes out, he beats him with some type of pump handle face buster, and we're all happy. Yay, the unknown guy with no charisma and no look or any real future in the WWE who will never be over. We only called him out because we're in the UK. He probably won't even be there next week because the US crowd won't give a fuck out. <laughs> the booking is terrible! Sucks! Sucks big hairy ass. You 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 put you you already put the little fucking midget over him. Then they, you give him the belt back. Then you call out this guy because we're in the UK for a tape show, which no one's gonna watch. They're just gonna read the spoilers and not even fucking watch this shit. And you're telling me that you're gonna put this. No charisma, nobody over Enzo. One of the best things on your fucking show. And, and, and it's like, this guy is like, you know, he, he he's their silver tuna. And they are going to, say, cut his mic and try to disparage this guy. You, you know, I understand that there's a lot of backstage heat on Enzo. And they really want him to fail. But, you know, holy shit, guys. What the fuck is up with WWE? It has become way too political. We're here embarrassing Enzo on SmackDown. We're trying to embarrass Corbin. You know, and you notice that all the mo the things that are most infuriating on these shows are, stu are stunning. They're, um, you know, they're coming from the, the Lucha Dragons. <laughs> you know that? You look at it. Sin Cara and Kalisto. They're so obsessed with, you know, they're putting these guys over at the expense of two guys that actually have a future with Baron Corbin and Enzo. Both guys have a look. Both guys have a lot going for them. And, you know, but you rather make those two schmucks look better. But it's all about Pitoon, Pitoon. People are so happy. Oh, Pitoon, I love Pitoon. <laughs> Pete Dune, even the fucking name. Anyway, um, so backstage, what is up with Charlie Caruso? One week she's dressed up like Ivory. She's like, they make her act like a bitch during everybody's post. Well, actually, Alyssa, you know, is she supposed to be the face backstage, and Alyssa, uh, Alexa Bliss is supposed to be the heel? 
I liked it when Bliss put her in her place, quite frankly. Dumbass bitch. Fuck off my TV. Then in the main event, it was Sheamus and Cesaro defeating the Shield for the tag titles because the New Day, um, they, they came out. And, you know, the, the, the Shield are just like, they won't even go into the crowd. They're just like, hey, you, yelling at them like a bunch of idiots from ringside, which look dumb as hell. Then um, Kurt Angle is like is telling them to come out of the entrance way. Like, does Kurt not know his way around the building? Why not have them like come around and, and come with a new day or like in the top stands? Why would they come out through the entrance way? And then obviously the new day will run off because there's greater numbers. That made no sense anyway. Sheamus hits the bro kick. Gets the pin and gets a surprise win. So, you know, it was nice to have a little surprise at the end. But the Shield are like sitting around like a bunch of, you know, like a bunch of bewildered ducks. Like, oh, what's going on here? The, the New Day are here. Oh. You know, what is with them? Like, they take their talent and make them look like a bunch of fucking morons. If it's one thing WWE does right, it's that. And that's not even right, it's wrong. But in this case, they get they get that right. Because if that is what they're going for, if you want to make your talent look like a bunch of fucking idiots, this is how you do it. This is exactly point by point how you fucking do it. If you want to make your talent look, you know, embarrassingly stupid and moronic, this is exactly how you would do it. You tell them to go out there, and just do it exactly how WWE's writing it now. You made your talent look like fucking idiots tonight. From Enzo to The Shield. Hey guys in the stands, we're down here. Why are we not going after you? Instead, we're going to yell at you from over here from like fucking 500 feet away. And then that you made the whole roster and Kurt Angle look stupid. They're, they're, they're not even strategically coming out. Under Siege 2. You know, what's worse, guys? I am defined. They're under siege. Under siege. We keep saying it. Oh, guys, I think we got a good hashtag on our hands. Under siege. Let's keep on saying it. Under siege. Under siege. Uh, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. My God, shut up already. You stupid tagline words. WWE are always, you know, they always do this. Hey, they always, like, get obsessed with the word or term. Oh, we're brilliant. We came up with something that... no, It's a fucking Steven Seagal movie, you idiots. You didn't come up with shit. That's not even your fucking term. So stop patting. Duh, we did good job, guys. Came up with term that's going to catch on. No, I am sorry. Under siege. Under siege. They all thought they were so cool. Right, like in that, that little SmackDown video that they were playing. Remember, under siege, under siege, under, yeah, okay. All right, guys, so, you know, you saw the box art for a Steven Seagal movie, and you're, keep going, I struck the hell out. Bunch of fucking idiots. This company fucking sucks. Dummies, dumbasses, morons, idiots, imbeciles, retards, morons, stupid idiots. Fucking fucktards. Need I go on? I don't think so. What a... You know, I can still can't believe what they did to fucking Enzo. Go fucking suck it, morons. You suck. And Corey Graves, if I meet you one day, God help me, I would fucking kick you square in the fucking testicles, you piece of fucking shit. Huh, <laughs> monster handled. Go fucking monster handle you, you, you cock, you fucking idiot, you fucking schmuck. Anyway, this has been your YWC champ, Angerly, signing out.